So we'll continue to talk a little bit more about data sheets for hardware components, specifically for integrated circuits because they are uh, extra complicated. So right here, we've got a, this is a rectifier, Schottky rectifier. This is a piece of a data sheet. So if you Google uh, Schottky rectifier and if you type in the part number for that and type data sheet and Google that, you'll come up with a data sheet, several versions of it actually, and you can click on it and there are lots of different things inside this data sheet. One thing that you always find inside a data sheet is the, uh, the, the physical dimensions of the part because uh, they always want to tell you how do you build it into a bigger system, right? So how's it going to connect to everything? You always want to know that. So this is actually a, a diagram showing the physical dimensions. It shows all detail, right? The size of it. And actually, this is just one cross section. A lot of these times, a lot of times these data sheets will show different views from different angles. But uh, this shows you the width of the pins. Uh, it shows you every dimension that you need to know about. And actually, right there on the, you can't see all the numbers there. They, they label them with letters, but there's a table next to it. Uh, that shows what the sizes are. This is a typical thing that you'll find inside a data sheet. Now you find tons of information in a data sheet. And part of it, certainly when I started, I could not read most of a data sheet. <laughs> All right? You can read a little bit of a data sheet. So I don't expect people to be able to read the whole data sheet. And in fact, most of the data sheet you don't practically need. But some things, some key things you should be able to figure out. So for instance, the size, right? You typically want to be able to read the size because there are certain things that you need to know. Like for instance, uh, for this class, when you're, say you want to use a breadboard, right? That's commonly what we want to use uh, for prototyping is a breadboard for connecting things. For that, you need to know the size of the pins and the spacing between the pins because the holes in a breadboard, breadboard is spaced at one tenth of an inch between each hole. So when you get a component, you want to know that the pins are spaced some multiple of that so you can fit them into the breadboard, things like this. And if they're not, you need to know that before you order the part uh, so that you can do something about it. So uh, the physical size and physical dimensions, you always find that in a data sheet and, uh, and you'll need to be able to read that. Now, other information, just a sample of some of the other information in the data sheet, you find electrical parameters and thermal parameters, you know, what temperature can this thing run at. Uh, now, usually thermal parameters are not something I generally need because I'm not trying to use these components in some, some extreme environment, you know, but they give some kind of boundaries, can't be hotter than this, colder than this. Colder than this. Uh, that's generally not useful to me, but you know, maybe, maybe you're using some application where you need that information. Electrical parameters are important. Uh, they tell you things like what's the maximum minimum voltage, maximum, minimum, maximum current that can go through that, and that is actually important because um, you want to make sure, for instance, that components are voltage compatible. So for instance, say you get a microcontroller and it's outputting at 5 volts, but you get a component that uh, only, needs, only accepts three, up to 3.3 volts, which by the way is a common mismatch. So if that happens, you need to know that so that you can either buy the component that matches your microcontroller, 5 volts, or you can do some type of stepping, voltage stepping, put a transformer in between, something like that, to change the voltages and make them match. So uh, these parameters, some of these components, some of these parameters you need, some of them you don't need that much. Now integrated circuits are another type of component. There are, there are sort of simple components and more complicated components. And the data sheets vary in complexity. So if you look at a simple component like a resistor, and we'll talk more about those later, but they are very simple, okay? You don't need a data sheet for a resistor or a capacitor. You need minimal information about those components. But uh, more complicated components, the more complicated they are, the denser the data sheet is. Integrated circuits are basically the extreme of that. So integrated circuits, and we've uh, talked about these microcontrollers are integrated circuits. Integrated circuits are chips. Uh, now, they're typically made of, uh, say, sili silicon, silicon base, but they can be made of other materials, primarily silicon right now. Uh, they're, uh, and we're not going to talk about the fabrication technology, except to say that they're basically made on these big wafers. So you can see down there, uh, you can see these, these disks, these flat disks, these circular disks. So those disks are slices of silicon and you chop them up into little, square, little rectangles, and each rectangle is a chip, right? And so you take that chip and you package it, as you can see over there on the right, you can see uh, the packaging. So you hide it inside this bigger package, and the package is used to protect the chip, also to cool the chip as it's running, also to wire its pins. You can see the pins on the, on the bottom. So the pins on a chip are too tiny to contact. So you need them to be bigger, so, you, so the package does that for you. So the package provides pins that you can actually make contact with. They're bigger and, big enough for you to solder into or connect into a breadboard or something like that. So, uh, so anyway, these integrated circuits, they have data sheets as well. 
chips protected by the package. These integrated circuits have data sheets as well, and these data sheets for integrated circuits can be very complicated because what these integrated circuits do can widely vary. And so an integrated circuit, for instance, could be uh, an entire processor, right? And then the data sheet for that can be, heck, over a thousand pages, right? I've definitely seen that. Uh, or simpler processes like a microcontroller, maybe you get a 150 page data sheet, right? And it's got tons of information on how this device behaves. Now, most of the time for this class, we won't have to go to that level of detail. We won't have to look at the 150 page data sheet and look at the details of what's going on. In fact, with the components that we're using, we're using Arduinos and Raspberry Pis. Those, those, bread, those boards, they, uh, they come with libraries that hide the details for us. Okay? So we will not have to be exploring a lot of the details inside those components, thankfully. Uh, but, uh, but you could. So if you really want to make the most use of these components, these chips, you can, uh, you can look in the data sheet and see lots of features. So the trade-off with what we're doing with Arduinos and Raspberry Pis is that they give us these library functions, and we'll talk about these later, that simplify things for us as programmers. But they hide details, they also hide features. So there are a lot of things that you can't do with the processor, with the microcontroller, uh, just because the library doesn't allow you access to that feature. Now, if you want access to that feature, you can go and look at the data sheet and, and do it, but you won't be able to rely on the nice, easy library functions that you really want to rely on. And inside this class, uh, we probably won't be, be going into that level of detail about these microcontrollers at all. We'll just use their library functions and not have to worry about these uh, extreme details of the behavior of these microcontrollers. Thank you.